when farmers provide input um, into the varietal development process, whether that's far upstream uh, into foundation seed or even further on downstream, that farmers are actually much more likely to take up that variety. And in fact, you see actually differences between farmers that participate in particip participatorial varietal selection and farmers that don't. You see actually much, much greater take up. So adoption is a really important aspect for us. But when we think about women and men farmers, which is a huge interest of the foundation to make sure that women farmers are benefiting from our investments as much as male farmers, that they're participating in our investments, um, we're finding lots of interesting differences between the trait qualities that men and women farmers want in improved varieties. Women tend to prioritize traits in improved varieties that impact their lives. And that's true for men. Oftentimes men are in charge with marketing of a crop and selling it to, to the market and often pocketing the income from that. So obviously they're, they want to see traits that incentivize them to produce more and, and benefit more from their varieties. So for women, it tends to be traits um, that are uh, correlated heavily with uh, culinary attributes like cooking time or even taste. There's some evidence that women care more about the nutritional content of crops. They care about um, feeding their children in a healthy manner. <clears throat> but also, women actually care much more about the, the traits that have an impact on the labor costs that they spend during the day. So many times, women are primarily responsible for weeding of a crop, um, for scaring away birds and pest management practices. Both men and women do prioritize yield, almost to, the, to a similar effect. Um, so it's additional quality traits that actually are often the key to women wanting to adopt a particular technology in addition to yield. They also want their households to recoup the benefits of more production. So in Ethiopia what they're implementing is something called f um, farm family trials, which is actually is great. It's a whole household approach to thinking about the different trait characteristics that farmers want to grow. And they actually implement a very classic, wonderful participatory varietal selection methodology, which is um, bringing the group together, both men and women together, and farmers, or women who self-identify as farmers, but also housewives of men who self-identify as farmers. And housewives are important. I mean, remember that they're going to be cooking, if it's for own consumption, whatever their, their husbands produce on the field. So you want their input into trait, trait variety, even if they don't, quote, produce uh, every day on farm. So Dr. Bede is actually bringing the households, to, households together. Um, he's actually then separating them out by men focus group and women focus group to actually uh, touch, taste, feel the types of, crate, of, of varieties that are being planted um, and have them discuss quite openly actually what, what do they see, what do they like, what don't they like, um, can they envision this being planted on their field, are there any reasons why they wouldn't plant it, how does this compare to land races or other varieties that are currently growing, actually staple crop adoption from poor farmers of improved varieties across the world, but in particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, it's actually quite low. And there's some statistics that quote anywhere between 5 up to 17, maybe even to 25 percent of improved varieties actually leave the shelves of different national and even private institutes and actually make their way onto the plantings of farmer fields, farmers' fields. And you know, we believe that's just a huge inefficiency of all of the input going into upstream research and development. Um, that farmers should actually want to use the seeds that have, quote, been produced with them in mind.